Yes, Mr Hodge. Commissioner, I'm sorry, the first witness that we're going to call is Ms Flanagan, but I, I'm actually wondering if we might just, it, the video conferencing is ready to go, but I'm wondering if we might just adjourn for 10 minutes. The reason being, I've just been shown some original documents by Westpac, and I think it might be helpful if we can find a way to display those, and I'd prefer to figure that out before we start Ms Flanagan. I'm sorry about that inconvenience. Um, well, uh, ten past or quarter I don't think past? That should be, if we make it quarter past, and we can figure out the the method. All right. Okay. Quarter Thank past you. two. Mr. Hodge. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner, the first witness in the first case study is Carolyn Flanagan. She should be via video link. And I'll just bring her up now. Yes. <coughs> Hello, Ms Flanagan, can you hear us? Yes, thank you, love. All right, now, your name is Carolyn Joy Flanagan. Do we need to I'm swear sorry. That's right. we'd, Yes, we'd, I apologise, Commissioner. We'd better start with a few formalities, I'm afraid, Ms Flanagan. We'd better have you sworn. So can we just uh, wait a moment? I think there's a, uh, a solicitor from the Australian Government solicitor there who'll uh, take you through the oath. Can we do that? Yeah. Can you repeat after me, Carolyn? I solemnly and sincerely... I solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm declare and affirm that the evidence I shall give that the evidence I shall give will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Thank you, Ms. Flanagan. Yes, Mr. Hodge. Thank you, Commissioner. Your name is Carolyn Joy Flanagan. That's right. And you've provided your address to the Royal Commission? Yes. Now, Ms Flanagan, you've received a summons to attend and give evidence before the Commission? Yes. And Commission. I got the advised me not to fly. I beg your pardon? The doctor advised me I'd not to fly. I'm not well enough. I, I'm, yes. I understand. The, document, the doctor said you weren't well enough to fly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Commissioner, I tender the summons. Exhibit 3.5 will be the summons to Mrs Flanagan. Okay. It's all right, Ms Flanagan, you don't need to You don't need do to anything. worry about that. We'll go through our uh, little bit of formality and we'll come to you in just a second. And Ms Flanagan, you. you've made a statement to the Commission. Uh, yes, I think so. Do you remember yeah. somebody got you? Somebody read out to you a statement, and then you signed it. Yes, I can remember that, love. Thank you. Attend to the statement, Commissioner. That'll be Exhibit Three Point Six, the statement of Miss Flanagan. And Miss Flanagan, I think you were saying before you couldn't travel to Melbourne to give evidence today because you're not well enough. Ah, no doctor said so. No. All right, and. If you need a break at any time, please just let us know and we'll, we'll deal with that. I'm sorry, can you not hear me very well, Ms Flanagan? <coughs> As you're breaking up to me, I'm not used to this sort of technology. I understand. We'll do our, we'll do our best and I'll talk as loudly as I can. Mm -hmm. Now, Ms Flanagan, I just want to confirmed, just so everyone knows, at the moment you're with, in addition to a solicitor from the Australian Government solicitor, there's also a lawyer from, yeah. from Legal Aid New South Wales there? Yes. And also your ex-husband, who is your support person? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, Ms Flanagan, I want to just ask you, before we get into the detail of this, some questions about your health. Perhaps... The most significant thing, which is obvious, is you have, you can't see very well. No. You're, I think I you just... I suffer from 
you suffer from what, sorry? Glaucoma. Okay. And I think you describe yourself as legally blind, is that right? Yeah. Yes. And in order to read documents, were you able to read documents without any assistance? No. I hand everything to him, even the bills. Can't see a thing, love. Can't even see you. And you've also got a number of other health conditions. You've had nasopharyngeal cancer. Yep. And depression. Yes. And chronic obstructive airway disease. Yes, that depress anybody. And osteoporosis. Yes. And you had a fractured neck of the femur. Yes. And divert, diverticulitis. Yes. And pancreatitis. Yes. And a high risk of <coughs> suffering from new osteoporotic <coughs> fractures. Well, I've not seen you. I didn't approve it. And I think at the moment you're recovering from a fractured pelvis. Is that right? Yes. And in 2004, you had an operation to treat your cancer, which removed some tumours from your throat and also half of your tongue. Is that right? Yes. All right. And your vision has been a problem for about 10 years. Is that right? Yes. Prejudice for eating words. I'm sorry, could you say that again, Ms Flanagan? It's getting, it's gradually getting worse yes. every day. Now, I want to turn to some events that occurred in 2010, and some of these events involve your daughter and your daughter's partner. I'm not going to name your daughter or your daughter's partner, and that's because... Thank you for that. That's right. That's because the commissioner has, or one of the reasons, is the commissioner has made a direction that their names not be published. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to refer to them as your daughter and your daughter's partner. Yes. Now, do you remember your daughter discussing with you alone that she and her partner wanted to get in about 2010? Yes. Is it, is it fair to say, Ms Flanagan, your memory is relatively vague about all of the detail of this now? Well, it's been that long, day, love, and I've, since then I've suffered the strokes and that. I understand. <coughs> and so, doing the best you can, do you remember your daughter telling you that she needed help with a loan? Yes, I do remember that. <clears throat> and do you remember <laughs> what it was that, what the loan was for? It was for the food, wasn't it? Yep, but from one of you, I think. Do you remember <coughs> her talking to you about the idea that you might be a silent partner in the business? That I do remember. Okay, and can you remember what she said about that? No, love. 
for it. I know they remember yesterday. <coughs> are you? Do you need? A, are you all right, Miss Flanagan? Do you want a break, or are you fine? No, I'm not. I'm okay. Yeah, I've been done with. I should probably just explain to the commissioner. It causes you some pain to speak. Is that right? Yes, I get dry mouth and start to choke. I got something to do. And. At the moment, you're receiving a disability support pension, is that right? That's right. And were you receiving that back in 2010? Yeah. Were you receiving that back in 2010? Yes. Yes. Now, do you remember going to a Westpac branch with your daughter in 2010? Yeah, vaguely, yes. Can you remember... Well, how many times do you remember having gone to a Westpac branch? Twice, I think. Okay. Twice, yes, I Twice. Ms. Flanagan, just if you, I'm sorry, I understand that there's people there to help you, but you need to just give your evidence to the commissioner. So. Oh, sorry. That's all right. And when you went to the branch, with your daughter, do you remember meeting with somebody else at the branch? Yes, a woman and a man were there in the um, side office. Okay. And, and, and do you remember that the, per <laughs> that the purpose of you going to the branch was to sign a guarantee? Yes. All right. And do you remember what you were told about the documents that you signed at the branch? No. Okay. Do you remember anybody reading out the contents of the documents to you? Someone did that. They read out the whole of the documents? Well, I think so. Okay. That was at the branch? Yep. And as I understand it, you think that you signed some documents that day? Yeah, in the office, yeah, in the bank. And are you able to remember now, could you read the documents yourself? No. Okay. Could they you, had to um, read it out to me. And could, they, could you sign the document by just looking at yeah, the document? On, now, they got a point to where I was signed. Sometimes it goes up the page, sometimes it goes down. Okay. Now, sorry. I'm sorry, say that again. Okay. I'm sorry oh, if you're having trouble understanding me. No, no, that's fine. Do you remember a valuer having come to your house at some stage? Yeah, I remember that. Okay. Can you remember a discussion with the valuer? No. Okay. Do you remember having gone to see a lawyer about the documents? No. Do you think it's... All I remember, all I remember is going to the bank. Okay. Do, do you think it's possible that at some time after the... And I'm sorry, let me go back a step and just explain something to you, Ms Flanagan. Moments before you gave evidence, Westpac managed to find the original copies of the guarantees and the mortgage... And they mm -hmm. think, you know, I'm sure you've been told over many years that there's, that the odd thing about your guarantee and mortgage is that there are two witnesses who have signed the document. You know that? Yeah. No. And well, you know that there's, it's said by Westpac that the lawyer witnessed your documents? No, I can't even remember where you've been either. Okay. Just the woman and the man on the other side of the desk. All right. Do you, do you think, Ms Flanagan, that it, if you'd been told or if you could remember being told to get legal advice, that that would have made any difference? Oh, I've gone straight to the way. 
Definitely. Well, that's that's now you mean. No, if I was told to get legal advice, I right. walked out of that bench and gone. At the moment, and doing the best you can, given the the way you felt about your daughter at the time, do you think that it was likely that you would have signed the guarantees in any event? I haven't signed anything, love for her. In hindsight, I, I had to be honest about that. What? If you can't help your children, who can you help? Now, from about 2012, Ms Flanagan, you started to receive some legal documents from Westpac? I never saw them. Um, <clears throat> I was in that with my daughter after I had the strokes um, for a time, and I never received one letter from the bench. All right, at some point in time, do you remember your Ron, your ex-husband, reading out some documents that had arrived in the mail? Okay. It's okay, Miss Lane. If you can't remember, you don't. You don't need to ask. I, I, I can't remember, love. Okay. And then, at some point in time, do you remember knowing that Westpac had brought a claim against you in court? No, everything was kept from me. Would do you remember though? You went to Legal Aid, New South Wales. Yeah, I think so. And do you remember what you remember? You met with Ms. Berglari. Yeah, she was nice. And do you remember that the reason that you went to meet with Ms. Berglari was because you received a document? Uh, yes. All right. And was that a document that somebody read out to you? Yes. And do you remember that? You understood from that that Westpac were trying to take action against your, or trying to uh, effectively cause you to sell your house or cause your house to be sold. Yes. All right. And do you remember that Ms. Baglari took or made a complaint for you to the Financial Ombudsman Service? Uh, yes, I think so. All right. And do you remember that what you wanted was to be able to stay in your house? Yes. And you know ultimately an arrangement was reached with Westpac that allows you to stay in your house? Yes, I know that until I die. Until you die. And, okay. and you know that if you, if you want to sell your house before you die, then Westpac will take some of the money from the sale of the house. Yes, I understand that, love. All right. Commissioner, I have no further questions. Thank you, point. Mr Hodge. Mr Dark. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Ms Flanagan, I only have a few questions for you. And you'd um, better explain who you appear for, I think, Mr yeah, Dark, yes. just to keep it all above board. Certainly, <coughs> Commissioner. I appear for Westpac at the Commission. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. This is Westpac's lawyer who wants to ask you some questions. Ms Flanagan. Please go on, Mr Dark. Saying? Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Ms Flanagan, do you recall that when you gave the guarantee uh, that you gave to Westpac, you understood that you were putting up your house as security for a loan to, to No, a I thought it was um, for $50,000. That's what I thought it was for. But you, you understood, whatever the amount of the loan, that you were putting up your house as security for that? Oh, yes, love, yeah. And, and you knew that your daughter and her partner needed you to do that because they didn't have any assets of their own to put up as security, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And um, your daughter told you that she and her partner would be able to repay the loan. Do you remember that? Yes, I remember that. And, and you understood. Otherwise, I wouldn't have put my house up. And, and that's because you understood that if they couldn't repay the loan, 
um, that Westpac could seek to recover it from you. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. And, and that that could involve them trying to sell your house, which you were putting up as security for the loan? Yes. Um, <coughs> you were asked a little while ago about um, what happened when you went to the bank to sign the guarantee. Do you recall that? Yes. I went into a little office and there was a woman and a man there. Right. Um, and I want to suggest to you that perhaps you're um, combining two meetings. Is it possible, um, Ms Flanagan, that when you went to the bank you met with a woman and then at a later point in time you met with a man who was a solicitor? Should have been, love. Could have been? Yeah. Thank you. I don't mean quite a suit. And, and, yes, um, and, and if you met with a solicitor about the guarantee that you gave to the bank, it's likely to be because the bank told you that you should get legal advice about it. That's right, isn't it? Probably, yes. Um, now, you mentioned before that you thought the loan was only for $50,000? Yes. Um, but you know that you didn't mention that in the statement that you gave to the Commission. Uh. You recall that you've given a statement to the Commission? Yes, no, I don't really. <laughs> I see. Um, and do you recall that you made a statutory declaration in relation to a FOS application? with the help What's of the that? legal aid solicitor? Let me, let me ask that question yeah. again. Yeah. Ms Flanagan, do you recall making a statutory declaration in relation to an application to the Financial Ombudsman Service with the help of a legal aid solicitor? Yeah, I probably do, yes. Yes, okay. And, and you didn't mention in that statutory declaration that you thought the loan was only for $50,000. Do you recall that? Yeah, I recall that. And you, you don't really have a clear recollection as you sit there in the witness box now, do you, that you did think at the time no. you gave the guarantee that the loan was only $50,000? Yeah, I know. I truly believe that. That it was for only $50,000. Even though and you didn't... Heck. Ms Flanagan, what, what I'm trying to suggest to you is that your memory of what you knew at the time you entered into the guarantee is very poor. Do you agree with that? Yes. And you don't yes, very. And you don't really remember as you sit there now how much the loan was for? No, love, I don't. Thank you. No further questions, Commissioner. Yes. Mr Hodge? No re-examination. Thank you, Commissioner. Could the Thank you very excuse? much, Ms Flanagan. Uh, Thank you. You're excused and we can uh, cut the video link, I think, can we not? Yes, thank you, yes, Commissioner. Yes, thank you.